the stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisperer in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are continuing with our campaign through the Circle Undone. This is the uh, For the Greater Good playthrough. This is the third Mythos pack in the uh, Circle Undone cycle in which we uh, visit the uh, Silver Twilight Lodge again, as you may remember, in the uh, second uh, second uh, scenario in the uh, Deluxe Expansion, technically the third if you include the prologue, we uh, pay a visit to the uh, Silver Twilight Lodge where we run into uh, the Spectral Watcher and uh, we attempt to escape. We, uh, we did do so and uh, rescued Joseph Miger in the process. So now we are headed back to the lodge after a trip to the witch house in the secret name, which uh, did not go very well for Diana Stanley and uh, the wages and wages of sin in which we visited uh, the old graveyard. Uh, we managed to uh, to talk to one of the heretics and deal with it. Uh, however, uh, we ran out of time. There are too many enemies, so we had decided to resign and take our uh, our victory points and head home. Before I get started, I just want to say a big thank you to the uh, patrons of the channel. These are the people who uh, make this all possible and uh, help me uh, bring uh, playthroughs like this to you. If you'd like to become a Patreon uh, patron of the channel, head over to patreon.com and uh, choose a tier uh, that, uh, that you like and sign up and uh, claim your rewards. I would uh, be extremely grateful if, uh, you, if I could uh, have your support. We uh, did not uh, make many changes again uh, as a result of our trip through uh, the graveyard in the Wages of Sin. Uh, our Diana Stanley deck, we earned three experience points during the Wages of Sin. So uh, once again, we removed one copy of Deny Existence 0 and uh, purchased one copy of Deny Existence 5 using that uh, experience point discount that we receive from... Uh, from the arcane uh, research, the double copies of that. I think going forward, uh, we'll probably be picking up uh, Shriveling 5 is uh, is one option. Uh, we can pick that up for free. And then uh, I would also like to get uh, I've Had Worse, the uh, uh, I've Had Worse 2, which uh, came out in Before the Black Throne. That's another uh, a very uh, great card for Diana. Here is a summary of the campaign so far. We had uh, Valentino Rivas was pulled into the spectral realm. We uh, had three pieces of evidence were left behind. Diana Stanley accepted her fate and added two tablets to the Chaos Bag, as well as the Tower 16 and the Ace of Rods to her deck. Looking back on that choice, uh, I am regretting it. The uh, Tower is uh, particularly nasty, and I don't think the, the Ace of Rods... Uh, Quite makes up for that. Uh, we earned 7 uh, XP during the Witching Hour. We've discovered three mementos during this campaign, the Mesmerizing Flute and the Ritual Components, which we picked up in the Witching Hour, as well as the Wisp of Spectral Mist, which we found in, uh, in the Wages of Sin. In order to find that mist, you uh, need to uh, deal with at least one heretic, and uh, we managed to do that. Uh, the investigators escaped the spectral realm at death's doorstep. We earned uh, three XP during that scenario, and we rescued Joseph. We agreed to uh, join the Silver Twilight Lodge, although uh, Diana is a redeemed cultist, so we are lying to the lodge and uh, deceiving it. We uh, hid our knowledge of the uh, witch's coven from the lodge before we headed over to uh, the witch house. We earned uh, one uh, XP during the secret name in that uh, very rough run, as well as a uh, physical trauma. And uh, three XP during Wages of Sin, and uh, three heretics were unleashed uh, onto uh, Arkham. So we will find out, I guess, in a later uh, scenario what that means uh, for Arkham. Three is a lot. It's uh, The vast majority of the heretics were released onto Arkham, so that uh, it does not bode well if our experience in uh, way back in Undimensioned and Unseen, where you can uh, unleash the broods on Dunwich, you want to uh, try to prevent as many of those broods as escaping as possible, uh, because it adds doom to uh, the following the agenda in where doom awaits. 
So uh, we shall find out what the uh, what the heretics uh, do for us uh, in this campaign. Hello, everybody. Welcome uh, to the uh, playthrough. Glad you could join me today. We are uh, set up and uh, ready to go here in Octagon. This uh, setup, uh, this scenario has a couple different setups depending on which way you go. If you are, uh, if you join the lodge, you get to use the uh, "We've been expecting you" uh, set of locations. If you uh, are uh, an enemy of the lodge, there is another set, the uh, members only, uh, the uh, members only card set. So we have the uh, "We've been expecting you" set. We also had to add a, uh, or sorry, remove a, a bunch of uh, cards from the uh, encounter deck including a whole bunch of acolytes which I'm uh, glad to see those go because they of course add doom as well as a couple of the cards from the uh, for the greater good encounter set we have uh, the lodge gates which is connected to the lobby now there is uh, we cannot go to the lobby uh, because the entrance to the silver twilight lodge is guarded we cannot enter it however lodge gates does gain uh, action parlay the guards recognize you from the migra estate and let you pass reveal the lobby so we have an easy way in uh, to the lobby probably our first action of the game the lobby is connected to the lounge as well as the lodge cellar and the lodge catacombs now the catacombs the door to the catacombs is locked you cannot enter the lodge catacombs unless you control at least one key now at the beginning of the game you need to set aside a skull cultist elder uh, tablet and elder thing tokens to represent keys that you will use uh, throughout the lodge now that uh, creates a bit of a quirk in uh, octagon because the uh, tokens are considered to be part of the chaos bag so as soon as you put them on the table they will automatically get uh, dragged into the uh, into the chaos bag so what i'm going to be doing is if i have keys i will be uh, creating special tokens for those and uh, adding them to my hand so they won't uh, as long as they're in your hand they won't get uh, snapped up by the chaos bag so that's uh, how we will be doing that our uh, agenda is 1A, the Hierophant 5. Adapt your beliefs and be open to new truths. You are, you are expected to conform. Do not stray from the path. And it has the forced effect. When you defeat a Silver Twilight enemy, you leave behind some evidence of the scuffle. Move one Doom from each enemy at that location to the current agenda. And it has a Doom threshold of 8. Act 1A is Warm Welcome. There are uh, two acts, uh, two act one A's. We are playing with the the one that uh, we you play with when uh, you are a member of the lodge, uh, and it is you have arrived at the lodge's manor in French Hill to see if you can help if they can help you piece together the evidence you've collected. Perhaps you can even speak uh, with the president of the lodge again. But as you approach the manor, you begin to wonder if this was a test of your loyalty all along. And we will need uh, three clues per investigator to advance. So we'll be looking to get some uh, some of our cards that help us gather clues in our opening hand, so we can get a, a flying start here to this uh, this scenario. We are playing uh, for the greater good on standard difficulty. The uh, skulls are minus X, where X is the highest number of doom on a cultist enemy in play. The uh, cultist of which there is one is a minus two and uh, we have to reveal another token that seems to be a very common theme for the cultist token always revealing another token the uh, tablets of which there are two is a minus three and if you fail place one doom on the nearest cultist enemy and uh, the elder things are minus three if you fail move one doom from the nearest cultist enemy to the current agenda i don't believe we have any elder things in the bag so it's just those tablets we have to worry about placing doom in play so minus three is really what we are going to want to hit uh, when we're investigating and or uh, in combat to uh, to avoid adding uh, any more doom than we have to because of course if we add doom to uh, to an enemy and then we have to kill that enemy that doom is going to end up on the uh, on the uh, agenda anyway now we had to set aside there's a whole bunch of cards that are set aside in this uh, scenario 
Uh, one of them being the puzzle box. Supposedly, uh, we will need to find this at some point uh, during the scenario. It is uh, an item and relic, and when you are defeated, we give the puzzle box to another investigator. And uh, it has the action, unlight a bra uh, brazier at your location. At your location, exhaust the spectral watcher or deal five damage to the spectral watcher if exhausted. This action does not provoke attacks of opportunity from the spectral watcher. That is probably, from my understanding of the future scenarios, uh, that will be of use to us in the uh, Union and Disillusion uh, scenario in which we will be uh, lighting unli and unlighting those, uh, those things. We also have a Summoned Beast set aside. It's got five fight, six health per investigator and two evade. It's a monster, silver, twilight, and elite. It has retaliate and hunter. Summon Beast gets plus one fight, plus one evade, plus one damage, and plus one horror for every two doom in play. Wow, that could be uh, that could be very nasty uh, toward the end of an agenda. That would be um, yeah, like plus plus three across the board. That would be uh, bad news. It has the forced effect at the start of the enemy phase. Summon Beast defeats each humanoid enemy at its location. Move all doom from each of those enemies to Summon Beast. Uh, so that will be, uh, again, I think the Silver Twilight Lodge enemies, as we saw in uh, At Death's Doorstep, they get to doom on them. So the Summon Beast will act much like the Watcher in that scenario and uh, be attacking Silver Twilight Lodge members, and uh, that doom will go on the agenda. All the more reason not to, uh, to pull that tablet token to be adding more doom. It's worth two victory points. If we defeat it, we get R3, and it will hit us for two damage and two horror. We also have August Lindquist, elegant and elusive. He's got the cultist and silver twilight traits, and he has the action. Investigator at, uh, investigators at August Lindquist location spend two clues per investigator as a group. Parlay each investigator who spent at least one clue must either take one damage or one horror. Remove one... Uh, remove him from the game and take control of his key so we will need to uh, if we're going to grab the key from august we will need to spend two clues and uh, then we will take a damage or a horror but we will get his key finally there is a uh, nathan wick master of initiation this guy's double-sided the uh, other side is the master of indoctrination humanoid uh, cultist silver twilight and elite he has retaliate we may parlay with him uh, test three uh, willpower to persuade Nathan to let you find another option. If you succeed, place one resource on Nathan Wick. Then if there are uh, one resource per investigator on him, add him to the victory display. If you fail, Nathan Wick attacks you. And he's worth a victory point as well and will hit us for a damage and a horror. He's got three fight, five health, and uh, four evade. So uh, that uh, parlay test shouldn't be too bad for... Uh, for Diana, if we can get off to a, a good start and stack some cards uh, underneath her to boost her willpower, or if we get, uh, say, David Renfield and or the, uh, the St. Hubert's Key into play. That is, uh, we also have some uh, locations, but we will deal with those uh, later once we have revealed them. Uh, Diana here, she has her two mental trauma, of course, from, uh, from the arcane research as well as one physical trauma that we picked up in the secret name. I think we're ready to draw our opening hand, so we will shuffle up our deck and see how we do. We uh, would like to get uh, a good start, I think. And uh, all right, we have an emergency cache, a mists of relay, a flashlight, David Renfield, and a perception. Okay, that is a uh, that's a nice uh, nice starting hand. Uh, the mists, I'm not crazy about. Uh, we that is a willpower effect, so we will probably need to uh, pitch that. Uh, the emergency cash is nice, but uh, do we need it with uh, with David in play? I think I'm going to keep it just uh, because we do have a lot of expensive assets in this deck, especially since we're mulliganing, mulliganing the uh, Mists of Rillier. If we happen to draw our tower, 
then we will need uh, many resources to get rid of that. So let's see what we do. We do get a torrent of power. So not to, not the card I was hoping to see. So we will have to, uh, we'll see how we do here. I think our first action will be, uh, let's, uh, let's go to the investigation phase and uh, see how we do. Let's uh, play David first. And uh, we will uh, uh, exhaust him and place a doom on him in order to, and then gain a resource. That's our first action. Second action, I'm gonna play the flashlight. And it of course has three uh, supply on it. And then I think we're gonna parlay. Uh, parlay, the guards recognize you at the Migra State, let you pass, reveal the lobby. So we can parlay as our third action and uh, flip this over. So the lobby is a three shroud location with zero clues and uh, yeah, not uh, not uh, some flavor text, but no uh, no clues to worry about. So we have to either go to the lounge or the lodge cellar uh, to find our clues this game. I think that's all that we have to do for, uh, for this uh, turn. Nothing in the enemy phase, of course. We draw the Ace of Rods during our uh, upkeep phase. So that's nice. Uh, if we can get that down, that will give us an extra action at some point during the game. Uh, so what we're gonna have to do, I think, we're ne we need to find where the clues are. So let's, uh, we're gonna do some uh, moving around and, and see if we can't uh, find some clues here during the next turn. Turn two. We add a Doom, and we're going to draw our first encounter card of the game. Let's give the uh, encounter deck a quick shuffle, and uh, then we will be ready to go. Let's see what we get. It's going to be Call to the Order. This is uh, from the For the, For the Greater Good uh, uh, set of uh, encounter cards. It's a scheme. Find the top two top find the two topmost cultist enemies in the encounter discard pile and spawn them in the empty location with the most remaining clues. If no cultist enemies are spawned by this effect, call to order gain surge. So that uh, will surge into, we get our first lodge enemy. It is the lodge neophyte. Three fight, one health and two evade. Humanoid cultist silver twilight traits. Spawns at any empty location. He is aloof. And uh, after Lodge Neophyte enters play, we place one Doom on it. Now, as a... Uh, I think I'm going to put him here. We can test... Uh, we can parlay test two willpower. If you succeed, remove all Doom from the Lodge Neophyte. And he, he will hit us for a damage. So we've got three Doom in play already. Uh, we do have uh, two. Uh, we have two willpower, so that's going to be a fairly challenging uh, parlay test right now. So that will be the uh, that will be our first. Uh, that will be our first encounter phase. We will get our three actions. Let's uh, head over to, well, we can only go to the lobby. So let's head there. This guy's aloof, so we don't have to worry about him. I would like to, to remove that doom from him, if at all possible. Uh, but we're not really in a position to do that. Uh, we probably need, skulls are minus one. Cultist is minus two. There'd be three minus threes in the bag and a minus four. So that's uh, that's not great. Uh, 16 tokens in the bag. So three minus threes and a minus four. That's uh, a quarter of the bag is, uh, is bad news for us, at least. Plus the more than a quarter because of the, the auto fail. So not, uh, not very good odds uh, there. I think we will use our second action to move to the lounge and see how we do here. The lounge, 
is a two shroud location with two clues. After the lounge is revealed, we put aside, put the set aside vault and library locations into play, put the set aside August Lindquist asset into play in the lounge, place one random set aside key on him. Okay, so we need to get the vault and the library first. There is the vault and there is the library. The vault is, now is it connected to both of these? The lounge is connected to the vault and the lounge is connected to the library. So it's connected to both of these things. Let's put the vault uh, below because feels like it should be deeper. All right, so we put the lounge and the, uh, or the library and the vault into play. Uh, we put the set aside August Lindquist asset into play in the lounge. Uh, so he will go in the lounge. And we will go, uh, we need to give him a random set aside key. So what we're going to have to do is do that now. Uh, so what we'll do for the keys, we will add some cards. Let's uh, do that now. So we will add a skull. We're going to put these in our hand just so we know. Uh, actually, what we can do, uh, do I have a secondary deck? I do. Okay, so we can put them in our secondary deck and uh, do it that way. Skull, cultist, tablet, and elder thing. So we will throw those in there. And uh, we will just uh, pick one at random. And so we will know which, uh, which one he has. Tablet and elder thing. All right. Okay, so we've got our four keys. So let's uh, let's shuffle these up. We'll just draw one at random. He has the cultist, so we'll put that back so it doesn't get sucked into the chaos bag. So this guy has the cultist key. So we need to spend two clues as a group. Uh, to parlay with him to get his key. Very well. Okay, I'm going to get my uh, David money. And I can grab a clue here, I think. So we need three clues there, and we're going to need another two. So we need five clues in total right now. So what we'll do, I think we'll use one flashlight charge to uh, reduce this shroud value to zero. So we will just go, uh, go three versus zero. And we get a minus four, but that's fine. We still succeed and uh, we do grab a clue. That'll be our turn now. Will we be able to kill David? That's the trick. We'll need to take a horror at some point if we want to get rid of him before we advance. But we do have some time. There's a vicious blow uh, that we draw during the upkeep phase. We have uh, two, three, four out of eight doom in play. Let's draw our encounter card. It's going to be a mysterious chanting Place two Doom on the nearest cultist enemy. If there are no cultist enemies in play, search the encounter deck, deck, deck and discard pile for a cultist enemy and draw it. Uh, this guy is a cultist enemy, so we are going to have to deal with him here, I think. Uh, place two Doom on the nearest cultist enemy. That... Uh, I don't like that. That would launch us up to two, four, five, six doom. I'm going to shuffle that back in the deck with Dark Insight. Uh, do we have the resources to do that? Yes, we do. We can spend two. We get one back. 
uh, from Dark Insight. And uh, we will get to draw a card. So that goes, we shuffle it back into the deck. Okay. I think that's a, that's a good move. That would just uh, send the doom way too high. And we get to draw a card, which is another perception. So we are up to three uh, willpower now. If we can uh, somehow interact with the board here for a second. Hmm. All right, we'll just have to remember. We have three, uh, three willpower. So that was that. Uh, we can go, go to the investigation phase. Let's get some money from David. Pops us back up to three resources. Uh, we can grab this other clue here. So I'm going to spend another uh, supply from the Felash Light to go three versus zero. Chaos Bag gives us a skull. That's a minus one. Or that's a, yeah, that's a minus one. Uh, so we do succeed. So we grab this clue. All right, we've got two clues. Now we can go and get uh, August's key. Uh, each investigator who spent at least one clue must either take one damage or one horror. Now that is a good way. August can kill David for us. Two, three, four. So we have some time. We have some time before we need to take that action. Uh, so I think what we'll do is we will move. Now we can move to either the library or the vault. We might as well. Um, what's the vault? The door to the vault is locked. You cannot enter the vault unless you control the elder thing key. Uh, that uh, So we cannot go there. Our only choice is the library. So we will go to the library. Whoa, six shroud location. Oh dear. Uh, the library is a six shroud location with one clue. While you were investigating the library, if you control the tablet key, the library gets minus three shroud. Wow, jeez. How are you supposed to deal with that? Um, wow, that is rough. Um, What's the best we can do? We can go three, four, five. Uh, we can drop it to four. We could go uh, three, four, five with perception, six with uh, torrent of power, and then we could reduce it by two. So it would be six, four. Wow, six shroud. Um, I guess we've got to go for it because otherwise we're going to end up backtracking. We have only one other location we can go to, that being the Lodge Cellar. So we would need one clue here and then another two clues here if we're going to advance. If we spend two, yeah, if we spend the two clues on to get August's key, we would need, uh, can we get into the catacombs? We need at least a key. So we can get to the catacombs if we grab his key. Well, let's give it a try. We might as well. Uh, we, we don't want to backtrack. So we're going to throw everything we've got at this six shroud location. And so we are going uh, three, four, five, six versus four. Uh, we don't have anything else. Let's see what the chaos bag has to say. Minus two, so we do succeed. Uh, we grab this clue. Okay, well, we got uh, a little bit lucky there. Uh, so we do grab that clue.
and we gain a victory point. Uh, unless, of course, there are many scenarios where they always add, add clues to the table after you flip. So who knows? We may not keep that victory point for the remainder of the game. Nothing in the enemy phase. Uh, we go to the upkeep. We draw a Dark Prophecy. That is a card we can stack beneath Diana. And it gives us a choice of, uh, of uh, Chaos Tokens. I think that's all we've got. Uh, two, three, four. We're going to go five versus eight. So let's go to the next phase. Turn four, we're at five of eight. Our uh, encounter card is going to be Centuries of Secrets. We've seen this one uh, several times uh, before in the past. Test five willpower for each point you fail by. Discard the top card of the encounter deck. If a curse treachery is discarded by this effect, deal one direct damage to your investigator and to each of your ally assets. All right, so we've got a test. Uh, we're just testing three versus five. Not great odds. We don't really have anything else to discard to it. We get a minus one. So we are at two versus five. So we have to discard three cards. And we're looking for curse treacheries. There's a hex. There is a mark of the order. And of course, we draw the curse like on the very last, uh, very last card. So if a Kurtz treachery is discarded by this effect, we deal one direct damage to your investigator and each ally asset. That's fine. Uh, he, David's going to take one, and we're going to take one. Now, what we can do? Uh, we need to get. To, we need to bump our willpower here. But we're not. To, we've only got a one card to do it. So let's. Uh, we're going to go to the investigation phase. Probably should have played our our dark prophecy there, just to uh, to deal with that. Uh, we would have gotten a. We probably would have failed it anyway. But at least we would have gotten to choose uh, a token. I'm going to use David here. I'm going to get. I'm going to add a doom to him so we can gain two resources. Then I'm going to spend. I'm going to take the action on uh, August. So we will take the action. We will spend two clues as a group uh, in order to. Uh, gain so we take a damage or a horror so we can just take a damage that will kill david and we take control of his key so we get the uh we get the cultist key so we'll throw that into our hand three keys remaining all right so that was our first action we can't go to the vault we uh so i guess we're heading downstairs so let's move uh first action move back to the lounge second action move back to the lobby and that will be that nothing during the enemy phase because that guy is aloof we draw another copy of vicious blow during the upkeep, we've got uh, seven resources, so we're doing pretty well. David gave us enough resources that we uh, we should be all right, plus that uh, emergency cash in our hand. Uh, so we're going to go to the uh, the encounter phase, or sorry, the mythos phase. There are five of eight doom in play, uh, and we're going to draw an encounter card, which is going to be evil's past. We put that into play in our threat area. There are no copies of it in your threat area. It uh, gains surge. Sorry, if there is a. Yeah, if there is, we would it would gain surge. So uh, we just put that in, and of course, if the encounter deck runs out of cards, we take two horror and test uh, test three willpower. So not uh, not a terrible card. Haven't had this. I think this one is particularly nasty in the Witching Hour. It is. Uh, I haven't uh, had too much trouble with it other in other scenarios. So 
so we gain our three actions. I guess we're headed downstairs. We will go to the cellar. This is connected to the cellar, is it not? Yes, it is. So we'll go to the cellar as our first action. Cellar has one clue. Uh, after the lodge cellar is revealed, it's a three shroud location, one clue. After the lodge cellar is revealed, place one random set aside key on it. Okay, so we'll shuffle up our keys and we will see which key it is. It is the tablet key. So the tablet key is on the lodge cellar. Three shroud location. Uh, we are sort of out of tricks as far as, uh, as flashlights go. We still need two clues in order to advance. So let's, uh, let's throw our perception to this. Uh, we probably didn't draw a card for the last perception, I, I suspect. Just gonna check quickly. I, th I feel like we didn't draw a, a card for that perception. Uh, we grab the cultist. Oh, that was several turns ago. Yeah, so we're not gonna, we'll, uh, we'll just have to, that's an error we'll have to uh, remember for next time. Make sure you draw your cards for your uh, skills if you get them. So we're going five versus three. Um, do we have anything we wanna do? Uh, we could draw, those are minus threes. So we don't wanna play our Doc Prophecy right now. We're just gonna go five versus three. Uh, Chaos Bag says a skull, that's a minus one right now. So we do succeed and we will remember to draw our card this time. There is St. Hubert's key, nice. And we grab this clue. Now I believe under the rules we do grab, once this location is empty, we grab the, uh, if a location with a key on it has no clues, an investigator can take control of its key as a free triggered ability. So we get, uh, we get the tablet key. All right, so we've got the tablet key. Two of the four keys. That was our second action. Now we can play, I think what we're gonna, pl we'll play uh, St. Hubert's key as our third action. And that will give us a willpower and a, another uh, another um, intellect as well as give us a bit of a sanity buffer so that is our turn now we can truck it all the way back to the oh no we can't we don't have the vault we still can't go to the vault our only option is to go to the catacombs uh, next turn so that uh, that's where we're headed uh, let's uh, Nothing during the enemy phase. We go to upkeep and we dr get drawn to the flame. Now that is super timely. Awesome, uh, awesome draw there to uh, to set us up for our uh, trip to the catacombs. If there are a couple clues there, we will be able to advance uh, the act deck next turn. Uh, we're going to go to six of eight doom during the uh, mythos phase and our encounter card this turn is going to be another mysterious chanting i do not have anything that can deal with that unfortunately that is a nasty piece of work so the mysterious chanting is going to add two doom to the nearest cultist enemy so that guy is getting too doom and I can't, uh, I can't do anything about it. So we are gonna be advancing next turn, whether we like it or not. No, no cancels to speak of. That's uh, one of the, uh, the issues we've had this game is we just haven't drawn the cancels we need in order to, uh, to buff our uh, willpower. 
the best we've uh, we're up to three but uh, we need to be higher if we're gonna now what we could do we could go back we could parlay with this guy now that he's got all that doom on him we could parlay with him we have three out of we need a good draw though that's the problem it's risky we either go back and parlay with him in which case we get two attempts uh, if we fail, uh, we would have to, uh, we will advance next turn anyway. If we succeed, we would buy ourselves a couple turns. I feel like we should tr give it a try. Who knows? All right, we're going to do it because we want to try to delay this advance, I think. So we will move back. Second action, we will parlay. We are going three versus two. Uh, we can go four versus two, but that doesn't really get us. Uh, the skulls are minus threes now, so there's a lot of minus threes in the bag. We're going to go four versus two. Let's see what the chaos bag says. Chaos bag gives us a zero. Nice. Okay, so we parlay with this chump. And uh, we may uh, remove all the doom off him. Then we may move back. Okay. Awesome. Uh, that was a huge play there. That, uh, that really saved us a, a couple turns. So we, we won't uh, flip this turn. Uh, but and there we draw our word of protection so now we do have a cancel in our hand so very nice there that is the cancel we need for those uh those kind of uh mysterious chantings six of eight doom we will uh, draw an encounter card which is going to be an ancient evils i'm going to cancel that for sure i'll take a so i uh I pay a resource, I gain a resource, I take a horror, and I will just cancel that. So we don't have to deal with that quite yet. Uh, we will draw a card. There is our Twilight Blade. Nice. Very nice. That lets us, if we can get that into play, that lets us use our... Uh, uh, we may use our willpower instead of uh, our combat for this for attacks and we can play or commit events and skills beneath Diana as if they were in our hand so we can uh, that gives us our access back to our cancels uh, so we would lose those cards though so let's uh, not sure why I can't uh, interact with these things today it's strange uh, so if we we have four intellect and one two three four willpower, I think is our first action. I'm going to play the Twilight Blade because it's so good. Twilight Blade comes down. Second action, we're going to move to the Lodge Catacombs. So we do have a key, so we can go there. There are no clues there. Interesting. So did I just hoop myself? One, two, three, four. And I spent two. So did I just screw myself by not getting enough clues? All right, well, it's a four-shroud location with zero clues. When Lodge Catacombs is revealed, put, a set, put the set-aside Inner Sanctum and each set-aside Sanctum Doorway location into play. So we're not to... Uh, we haven't uh, run out of clues yet. 
This uh, scenario so far is uh, reminding me a lot of uh, curtain call by just the, the layout anyway. So the door to the inner sanctum is locked. You cannot enter the inner sanctum unless you control the uh, cultist key. We do. And the lodge catacombs is connected there, I assume it is. Well, we've got a, a big, a nice juicy uh, drawn to the flame in our hand, so I am going to move to the, the inner sanctum. Inner sanctum is a four shroud location with one clue. After inner sanctum is revealed, place one random set aside key on it. Shuffle up our keys again. It has the elder thing key on it. So we will need to grab that key as well as that clue, and then we can advance. It's not worth any victory points, though. So uh, we will go to upkeep. We draw a dodge, and uh, we will uh, we will go to our mythos phase. Turn eight. Seven of eight doom. Draw an encounter card. Mysteries of the Lodge. Place one doom on the nearest cultist enemy. Then until the end of the round, increase the difficulty to fight, evade, or parlay with that enemy by two. If no doom is placed by this effect, Mysteries of the Lodge gains surge. Shall we place a doom on this guy? That's fine. We were going to advance next turn anyway. So that uh, that is not a uh, not the worst card in the world. All right, we will get our three actions. We will, I think we're going to have to play our uh, Drawn to the Flame here to grab this clue uh, because we just have a four. Yeah, we're just at four intellect. So we'll play our Drawn to the Flame as our first action. So we're going to draw an encounter card, which is going to be the Lodge Jailer. Uh, he goes to any Sanctum location. He's got two Fight, three Health, and three Evade. Humanoid, Cultist, and Silver Twilight. Any Sanctum location, he's aloof. After Lodge Jailer enters play, place two Doom and one random set-aside key on it. Uh, test three uh, Intellect. If you succeed, either remove one Doom from Lodge Jailer or take control of its key. Um, where do we put him? Uh, I believe the mysterious... With that enemy. Okay, so the uh, this guy is still... He's just a parlay three. So he... We had the elder thing token, so this guy has the skull. Uh, we just need to decide where to put him. Two Doom and one random set-aside key. Uh, do I want to put him with me? Might as well. I think I'm just going to put him with me. So he gets two Doom. And he has the Skull Key. But we gain this clue. And when we gain this clue, we can take the free triggered ability to grab the uh, the key. So let's uh, look at all these. Grab the Elder Thing key. So we've got three of the four. Now we can advance the Act deck. Do we want to do that? Or do we want to try... Um, do we want to try to parlay with this guy a couple times and see if we can't grab a key? Is there any bad uh, place a doom, reveal another token? No, there's no real downside uh, to parlaying with this guy. Uh, if, we can tr if we can parlay with him, we can certainly grab that key. Let's give it a try. We'll go four versus three. Sure, why not? Four versus three, Chaos Bag gives us a plus one. So we do successfully parlay with this chump. 
and uh, we can either remove one doom from him which uh, won't make any difference or take control of his key so we managed to get the other key so we have all four keys let's advance the act deck now we have one action remaining we might as well advance the act deck and see what we need to do act 1b is the initiation Ah, it's you. You are approached by a member of the Lodge whom you recognize, one of Carl Sanford's bodyguards from your previous meeting with the President. I regret to inform you that uh, Mr. Sanford and the other members of the Lodge are busy with an important task at the moment. I would suggest you come back at a later time. You tell the man that your task is important and offer to help in return for a meeting with Mr. Sanford. He considers you for a moment, then nods. All right, we are attempting to open a device which we believe will help us bind the revenant you encountered earlier. You'll want to speak with Nathan Wick if you want to help. You can find him in the library upstairs. You thank him and return to leave, but he grabs your arm and stops you, adding one final warning. You should know that we intend to open this device at any cost. If you cannot stomach the consequences, once again, I suggest you leave. If the library is not in play, put it into play. The library is in play. Spawn the set aside Nathan Wick enemy in the library. Master of initiation side up. Attach the set aside puzzle box story asset to him. So Nathan is in the library with the puzzle box. All right. Uh, what is Nathan? What do we need to do? Willpower three to persuade him to let you find another option. If you succeed, we place a resource on him. Then if there are one resources, uh, he will attack us. Okay. Uh, but he is not aloof, so he will be attacking us regardless. Okay, so we advance the act deck. We do have the master of initiation side face up. Okay. Uh, that is the other act. We do not use that. Our act 2A, obtaining the device, uh, whatever the lodge is planning, it involves a device. They will do anything to open. It seems a lodge member by the name of Nathan Wick holds the device at the moment. One way or another, you have to get your hands on it. If Nathan Wick is added to the victory display by any means, choose an investigator to take control of the attached puzzle box and advance. All right, well, we have to go and get that puzzle box. So we can move. We'll move back to the Lodge Catacombs with our final action. And that will be our turn. Uh, nothing during the enemy phase. Uh, now it wants us to discard cards uh, because we obviously have, we need two cards and we've got all these uh, tokens in our hand. So I'm just gonna pick two cards and then put them back in my hand uh, because it's uh, counting my uh, keys as cards that I need to discard. So we actually have only have six cards in our hand and four keys. We have Alyssa Graham, that's awfully nice. Uh, she only gives us a uh, plus one uh, intellect though, and right now we need willpower. Now we do have a dodge in our hand, that can boost us up a little more. Uh, so we're at one, two, three, four. Uh, four out of, four of three. All right, that's gonna be that. Now we are going to advance. So we add a Doom, we remove all Doom from play. Uh, we flip over the uh, this. Uh, Agenda 1B is Meeting of the Minds. As you explore the building, you almost wander into a heated debate between several members of the Lodge in a nearby hallway. Seeing an opportunity to learn more, you hide and eavesdrop on the conversation. Mr. Sanford's orders are to complete the Geist Trap at any cost, one of them says firmly. If that means we must put lives in danger, so be it. The good of the many outweigh the good of the few. You know this. Another member, a woman, pounds her fists on the wall. 
No, our first resort cannot be to spill blood. There must be another way. There is no time, the other responds, and there is a murmur of agreement among the rest. It is clear you do not have the will to proceed. Take her away. We will make her see herself the... We will make her see for herself the sacrifices that must be made for the greater good. No, you cannot do this, the woman yells. You wince as her screams echo down the corridor. What are they planning to do? Discard the top five cards of the encounter deck in player order. Each investigator must draw a cultist enemy discarded this way. Okay, so we discard the top five cards. There is the Keeper of Secrets. So one, two, three, four, five. There are two cultists we drew. In player order, each investigator must draw a cultist enemy discarded this way. So we could... Now, do we draw both cultists or just draw one of them? Because if I only draw one, I would draw the Lodge Neophyte, obviously. Uh, not this uh, chump who adds Doom every turn. So let's see. Discard the top five cards of the encounter deck. In player order, each investigator must draw a cultist enemy discarded this way. All right, I'm going to assume I just have to draw one. So I'm going to draw this guy. And he will spawn at any empty location, and he will get a doom. Okay, so it's either... Yeah, okay, I think we've done it. I don't think we have to uh, do any more than that. Agenda 2A is ends and means. The Lodge will resort to drastic measures in order to achieve their goals. If you don't act quickly, blood will surely be shed. Each Silver Twilight enemy in the Sanctum, in a Sanctum location, loses aloof. So the, uh, the Jailer here loses aloof. And the... No, everybody else is still aloof. When you defeat a Silver Twilight enemy, you leave behind some evidence. Move one Doom from each uh, enemy to that location to each uh, current agenda. Okay, so we've advanced. We need to draw an encounter card, which is going to be Expulsion. If there are no cultist enemies, Expulsion gains Surge. Otherwise, the nearest cultist enemy readies, moves one location at a time until it reaches your location, engages you, and makes an immediate attack. Then place each key you control on that enemy. That's not very nice. Um, hmm. How do we deal with that? Uh, well, he will engage us. So the nearest cultist enemy, we have the choice of the neophyte or the jailer. I think the neophyte will come after us. That's fine, actually, because what we can do... Nearest cultist readies moves one location at a time until he reaches your location and engages you and makes an immediate attack. Then we lose all our keys to him. So what we can do is we will dodge his attack. Uh, we will just remember that we don't have any keys. So we pay a resource, we gain a resource, we dodge this chump's attack, and then we, uh, we draw a card. We get a Dark Prophecy, okay. Okay, so he is engaged with us now. So we can kill him, but we're going to have to add his doom to the, uh, to the current agenda. All right, so we will add three. So let's attack this guy. We do have the Twilight Blade, which gives us... We can use our willpower instead of our combat. And our willpower is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 versus 3. And he's only got one health. 
So we will uh, now just want to check the rules for a second. Uh, if the enemy with the key leaves play, the player, player who caused that enemy to leave must take control of its key. Okay, so once we kill this guy, we get all the keys back anyway. So let's kill him. Uh, we are at uh, 4, 5 versus 3, so our first action will be to kill this guy. 5 versus 3, Chaos Bag says auto fail. Uh, he does not have aloof, so we do, uh, he does not have retaliate, so that's not an issue. Let's try again. 5 versus 3, Chaos Bag gives us a minus 2, so we do kill him. Uh, so he will die, and we move his doom up to there. All right. After you defeat a silver twilight enemy, you leave behind some evidence. Move one doom from each enemy at that location to the current agenda. So then we can move again to the lodge cellar. All right. So we need to get to the library and deal with Wick. That's all we have to do. We just have to add him to the victory display. So we just need to persuade him once, and then we can add him to the victory display. Okay, we know what our plan is here. Uh, enemies, this guy's not a hunter. This guy's not a hunter. This guy's not a hunter. So we're, we're good there. Uh, again, it wants me to discard three cards. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put these in my... I'm going to put the keys back in the... Uh, back in my uh, other deck now since we know we've got all four and uh, we our hand size is fine okay so we go to the next mythos phase two of ten doom uh, we will draw an encounter card which is going to be knight of the order knight of the outer void sorry Three fight, three health, four evade. Humanoid cultist, silver twilight. It spawns at any location connected to yours. It has aloof, peril, and retaliate. Okay, any location connected to ours. After it spawns, we place either one or two doom on it. Test willpower uh, three. Four or intellect four. If you succeed, take control of one doom on Knight of the Outer Vo and flip it to its clue side. If you fail, Knight of the Order of Outer Void attacks you. So we have a choice. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So if we we would have, those are pretty tough tests. Uh, after Knight of the Outer Void enters play, we place one or two Doom on it. So we have a choice. I'm going to place this guy here. I'm just going to place one Doom on it. Whoops, that's not a Doom. This is a Doom. Okay, so this guy gets a Doom. And... So then we can just move away. So we've got three of ten doom. We need to go talk to Nathan here. Nathan is the key. So we're going to go... We'll go to the investigate phase. Move once. Move twice. To the lounge. Now if we enter this guy's location, he will start attacking us. There's no sense in that happening, so I am going to spend four resources to put Alyssa into play. She gives us another intellect. Uh, now they're working for some reason. Two, three, four, five. Uh, and three, four, five. So we've got five intellect and five willpower. And we've got Alyssa. Now we can use Alyssa to check what our next encounter card is going to be. It's going to be a locked door. Uh, attached to the location with the most clues. That's fine by me. There are no clues in play. Now we could head to the vault and see what's there. 
Uh, maybe that would be worth a victory point. The vault's probably worth a victory point, I'd imagine. Um, so maybe we do that uh, next turn. We can just put... That's weird that you can attach a locked door to the to the uh, the gates. Yeah, okay. So we know what our next encounter card is going to be. Uh, enemies, this guy is not a... Uh, he's not a hunter. No hunters. We draw an enchanted blade and we will go to the next uh, mythos phase in which we draw the locked door which I'll place on the lodge gates. Three actions. We have three of ten, do uh, four of ten doom. I'm going to use my first action to move to the vault since we do have the uh, that key. Uh, it is worth a victory point. Uh, forced after the vault is revealed, place one random set aside key on it. That's fine. We don't have any keys to deal with. Uh, we have all the keys. So what we can do is just investigate. Where are five versus four? We can go six versus four. And maybe what we do now is we play our dark prophecy and angle for a, a skull. Because that would be one and we'd be fine. So what I'll do, I'm going to play the Dark Prophecy. We spend a resource, we gain a resource. We stack this beneath us. We're going to draw five, uh, five tokens. And we get to draw a card. There's a Ward of Protection. Good. Uh, let's see what we get if we draw multiple tokens. Draw X tokens from the chaos bag. We are drawing five. We're looking for a skull. And we did not get a skull. We got a, we did get a, uh, a tablet, which is minus three. And we got a, a uh, cultist, which is a minus two. We went six versus four. So we'll draw the cultist and then we have to reveal another token. So let's peek at the uh, top token. It is a zero, so we succeed on that check. So our uh, Dark Prophecy paid off there for us. Very nice. Uh, we, uh, that was an action, and we gain a clue. Uh, we shouldn't have this many clues. We should have uh, one clue, I believe. And then we're going to move back here to the lounge. All right, now we've got a willpower of one, two, three, four, uh, five, six. Nice. And for whatever reason, this isn't working again. So strange. Okay, well, we've got six willpower. So that gives us a good, uh, a good chance to convince Nathan up there. We do have another word of protection. If we need to cancel something, uh, let's keep on trucking here. We've got uh, no, no hunters. We draw a dodge. There's another cancel. If we need it, we can dodge one of Nathan's attacks. And we will go. Uh, we will go to the mythos phase. So five of ten doom. Our encounter card is Evil's Past. We put it into play in our threat area. If there is no copy of it in your threat area, uh, it gains Surge. I think I'm going to cancel that. I think I am going to cancel that. So I will uh, pay a resource and gain a resource and draw a card. And I can stack this beneath her because I don't have five cards. 
Yeah, okay, so that goes beneath her. All right, good stuff. We, uh, we cancel this stupid card that was gonna surge on us. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Our willpower is now seven because of the uh, St. Hubert's key and whatnot. Uh, let's add some actions. Let's move into the, uh, the library as our first action. Nathan Wick will engage us. Uh, he has retaliate and whatnot. Three fight, five health, and four evade. Humanoid, cultist, silver, twilight, and elite. Retaliate, parlay, test three willpower uh, to persuade him to let you find another option. If you succeed, place one resource on Nathan Wick. Then if there are one resource on him per investigator, add him to the victory display. So we have two actions remaining. Let's persuade him. Nathan, there must be another way. We are testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven versus three. I like those odds. Let's see how we do. Chaos bag gives us a minus one. So we get to put a resource on him. Um, and then if there is one resource per investigator on him, add him to the victory display. Go to the victory display. Then uh, Act 2A is if Nathan Wick is added to the victory display by any means, choose an investigator to take control of the attached puzzle box and advance. So we get the puzzle box and we advance. All right, if you advance by defeating Nathan Wick, if you advance by evading Nathan Wick, if you advance by parlaying with Nathan Wick. All right, listen, Nathan explains quietly. Truth is there is probably a safer way for us to open the device. This building holds many secrets, more than you could possibly know, but time is running thin and Mr. Sanford wants it open by midnight. If you can open it before then, great. If not, well, if I were you, I wouldn't be around when, it, when we try to force it open. He hands you the device and walks away, leaving you in silence. Okay, so we've got the puzzle box. And the uh, scenario is strongly hinting we uh, want to resign before uh, this probably pa. Is there only two agendas? There is only two agendas. So if we don't uh, deal with this thing, we are, uh, we are doomed. Okay, and then we advance to Act 3A, the four keys. The device is nothing more than a locked puzzle box, just about large enough to hold a pair of shoes. The diagram on its surface depicts a broken pattern which can be manipulated to no apparent end, and there does not appear to be a keyhole of any kind. Objective, if investigators at the same location control the puzzle box, the skull cultist tablet and elder thing key we advance we have all the keys so we advance we go to act 3b opening the box though the box itself seems to fight you at every turn with all four key components in your possession you finally manage to piece together how to open the contraption First, you twist and contort the box, many the box's many me mechanical devices until the image on its lid lines up perfectly with the diagram in your possession. That's the tablet key. Next, you chant the Latin incantation inscribed on the small wooden plaque you found, the uh, cultist. It takes a few tries to get it right, but eventually you hear a click as the surface of the wooden container shifts and changes. A round indentation has appeared on the side of the box, matching the size of your mysterious black onyx coin, the uh, Elder Thing token. And as soon as you place the coin inside, another wooden panel opens on the op other side, revealing a keyhole. Finally, you insert the key of bone, the uh, skull token, into the keyhole and turn it. The lid begins to... Uh, open and suddenly the entirety of the room is engulfed in a rush of air as all light color sound and matter is sucked into the box check the campaign log if the investigators are members of the lodge are one otherwise are two well 
that was uh so what is r1 what does r1 get us uh, that is that r1 so every fiber of your being is stretched as the box pulls you in however before it can accomplish its task the lid is suddenly slammed shut by an elderly hand you reel backward and collapse as the pulling force ceases when your senses finally return to you carl sanford is standing over you unflappable as ever i see you managed to open the device without defeating its guardian how fortunate he declares he examines the box closely removing the key and the coin from the container and recognizing them instantly i had a feeling you would be a valuable asset to the lodge but it seems i underestimated your resourcefulness perhaps it is time you learned the truth behind our organization i have a feeling you are destined for great things unexpectedly mr sanford hands the puzzle box back to you along with the components that unlocked it come with me there is much to discuss in our campaign log we record the investigators discovered how to open the puzzle box any one investigator may choose to add the puzzle box story asset to his or her deck this card does not count toward the investigator's deck size each investigator earns experience equal to the victory x value of each card in the victory display that would be three and we advance to interlude three the inner circle so the inner circle you have been brought deeper brought deep into the inner sanctum where only the highest ranking members of the lodge are allowed mr sanford explains that the order of the silver twilight is far older and more important than the public facing silver twilight lodge and that their knowledge extends into the realm of the arcane and the obscure for many decades the order of the silver twilight has pursued knowledge that can elevate humanity we have defended against threats to our very existence we have sacrificed everything for this sacred cause now one of these threats terrorizes our city oh is it inner circle interlude yeah okay uh now one of these threats uh, terrorizes our sitter and we only we are the only ones who can stop it you know the creature i speak of you nod in affirmation here is what we know it was the witches who brought this abomination upon arkham we tried to stop their ritual but unfortunately we were unsuccessful in binding it now it is loose and we must finish what we started before the witches are able to do the same but first i understand that you have some information for us as well please hand over what you have found it is important that we collaborate in order to understand this situation so we give uh, mr sanford everything we found proceed to inner uh inner circle two or we tell him tell him we have nothing to show skip to inner circle three man there's a lot here i am not going to read all this today this is uh this is something uh, this could take uh <laughs> quite there's a lot going on in interlude three so i'm going to save that for a uh, i will read that on my own and uh, we will see what uh we have to decide whether it looks like we have to decide whether to give him the mementos or whether we uh whether we keep everything hidden from him and uh we shall see what happens yeah so if we keep everything secret we just go right to the uh right to the uh we continue lying to him otherwise we uh cross off the mementos discovered and we continue on through so we'll see what happens so that is uh that is for the greater good uh not uh not too bad i'm i think we we did okay we uh, never had to deal with the beast and uh and uh, we managed to make it through so that will be uh that will be the playthrough uh, i enjoyed this scenario it was uh it was uh not uh, too difficult i uh, don't know what it would be like uh if we played it as as if we were enemies of the lodge that would be uh i think a much probably a much harder uh path but a lot of these uh i think it it certainly doesn't hurt that uh these enemies here are not uh they're not hunters or anything like that they just add doom and the doom threshold is pretty uh pretty uh generous at 10. 
So that is going to be uh, this playthrough. I will be back uh, probably next week with my playthrough of Union and Disillusion. I've heard uh, that scenario is uh, can be very, very difficult. And uh, we will see uh, how we do uh, in, uh, in that one. And then it's just in the clutches of chaos and before the Black Throne. And we will wrap up uh, our playthrough of the Circle Undone. Uh, Diana walks away with uh, three experience points in this scenario, so we will be able to purchase uh, some more cards, uh, another copy of, uh, or we'll, we will be able to pick up a copy of uh, I've Had Worse at least, and then maybe save a, save a point uh, for something else down the road. So uh, I hope you that you uh, enjoyed this playthrough and that you will join me again uh, uh, in uh, Union and Dissolution. And I forgot, this was a, a blind playthrough, so uh, if you do notice uh, any mistakes, uh, my apologies uh, in advance, and uh, you can just note them down in the, uh, in the uh, comments down below. So I hope you will, uh, you will join me again for Union and Dissolution. And until then, have a, a great week of uh, Arkham Horror. That's going to do it for this playthrough. If you enjoy what you... Uh, what you hear remember to like comment and subscribe remember to head over to patreon and uh, sign up to become a patron of the channel i would uh, really appreciate that uh, if you need to contact me i can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com i'm also on twitter at manfromlang until the stars are right keep your shotgun close and your eldest sign closer take care out there and happy investigating